This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Tesla said it's laying off 10% of its workforce because of, quote, hiring inefficiency due to rapid growth. But there's a number of key people included in those leaving the company. Most importantly is Drew Baglino, who's the head of powertrain and energy engineering and led projects including 4680 battery cell production and the cathode factory at Austin, Texas. He was one of four people listed in the leadership position on the company's website right next to Elon Musk. One of Baglino's senior managers at the cathode factory is also out the door, as is Tesla's head of policy and business development and several other members related to a data center expansion in Austin. It's reported that most of these projects have seen delays, which is likely the reason for the moves. But it also likely means that Tesla is behind on development of those projects. There's a battle brewing between Stellantis and its suppliers. Crane's Detroit business reports that at least two tier one suppliers in the U.S. have stopped shipping parts to the automaker because of disputes over prices. Suppliers are seeking cost relief from inflation from Stellantis, but it's refusing to pay for any increases in the cost of parts. The automaker filed lawsuits against the suppliers to force them to start shipping parts. In one case in February, a judge ordered a fastener supplier to resume shipments because it caused the shutdown of Stellantis's Toledo assembly plant. But in a separate case, a judge this month denied the automaker's motion to force a supplier to resume shipments of gears and pinions needed to make transmissions. Because of that, Stellantis may be forced to shut down more plants. And if the supplier doesn't resume shipments, the automaker claims the financial impact will be, quote, catastrophic and cause tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in damages. General Motors is getting a new home. The automaker announced it's moving out of its headquarters at the Renaissance Center in downtown Detroit to the new Hudson Detroit building next year. This is GM's fourth headquarters in Detroit since 1911. GM has invested more than a billion dollars into the Renaissance Center complex since it acquired it in 1996. But GM's workforce in the city has dwindled from 5,900 employees in 2018 to just 2,800 last year. So it didn't need all that extra office space and decided to move to a new location. Nissan is making progress with solid state batteries. It showed off the continuing work it's doing on a pilot line for all solid state batteries at one of its plants in Japan. The company says it's aiming to launch vehicles with these batteries by 2028 or 2029. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software-defined vehicles. Concepts that Honda first showed off in 2021 have inspired a new lineup of EVs that will launch this year in China. The Yi series clearly takes design cues from the EN concepts that it revealed three years ago, and the result is a look that's much different from Honda's current cars. The models will ride on a new dedicated EV platform that was developed in China. The P7 and S7 SUVs, which go on sale before the end of the year, will be offered in a single motor rear wheel drive setup or as a dual motor all wheel drive model. The next Yi series car will come out before the end of 2025 and will be a production version of the GT concept. While it calls it a concept, I don't think the production GT will be that far off from this car. 
However, there's virtually no details on the car at the moment. But in all, Honda says it will launch six E-Series models in China by 2027. Like many other automakers, Maserati isn't making the transition to electric as fast as it thought it would just a few years ago. But it's still showing off its next all-electric car, a BEV version of the Gran Cabrio. Like the hardtop Gran Turismo Fulgore, it's based on an 800-volt architecture, features an 83-kilowatt-hour battery pack, a tri-motor setup with up to 610 kilowatts or 818 horsepower, and it'll do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.8 seconds. Orders for the Gran Cabrio Fulgore will start in August, followed by sales in the fourth quarter, and starting price is expected to be around $200,000. Sustainability is a big goal in the auto industry, and that's why Jaguar Land Rover has developed a new portable battery storage system with used Range Rover and Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid batteries. The automaker partnered with energy storage startup Ally Energy to create the system. Each one contains seven Second Life batteries that can store up to 270 kilowatts of energy and can recharge up to nine Range Rover plug-ins at once. The automaker's engineers will be the first to use the battery storage system during testing for the new Range Rover electric vehicle that debuts later this year. The Alfa Romeo Milano, which just debuted last week, is already dead. But don't feel bad because it's only changing the name and we're getting one of the greatest automotive stories that I've heard in a long time. The Italian government has been pretty pissed off at parent company Stellantis and CEO Carlos Tavares for originally announcing job cuts and plans to scale back production in the country. It has since made commitments to boost production in Italy, but not all new products are going to be made in the region. One of those products being made elsewhere is the new Milano, a name that was crowdsourced as one of the most popular by Italian residents. It was announced that it will be made in Poland and then Tavares ticked off the Italian government even more by saying it would cost 10,000 euros more if the Milano had been made in Italy. So the Italian government turned to a law that was enacted in the early 2000s that prohibits the use of foreign made products from using Italian sounding names. Officials came out after the Milano's debut saying that the name violated the law. So Alpha obliged and it changed the name to Junior. It's used that name Junior for past models from the 1960s to the 1970s, and it was another favorite of those crowdsourced names. The company says it would also like to thank the Italian government for the free publicity brought on by the debate. And this reminds me of another story that's come out during my lifetime, and that's why Volkswagen has Bentley and why BMW has Rolls-Royce. In the late 1990s, VW chairman Ferdinand Piëch went on a buying spree trying to corner the market on luxury brands. That included paying $780 million for Rolls-Royce and Bentley, or at least what he thought was Rolls-Royce. At the time, BMW and Rolls-Royce, the jet company, collaborated on making jet engines, and BMW's then-CEO, knew that Rolls-Royce the jet company actually owned the Rolls-Royce name. So he waited as Piek paid all that money and he quietly cut a deal to legally get the name for 65 million bucks. Even so, Piek was so impressed that he eventually hired that guy as VW CEO, a dude named Bern Pichitz Reader. But that's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. At Tajin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.
when the peace and quiet of your morning commute is as comforting as your morning macchiato. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Taranza EV tires. Less noise for more quiet comfort.